A portion of this video is sponsored by Jaybird. Getting back in shape after all the bad habits I picked up in this pandemic has proven to be hard. So I decided to set a crazy goal. I'll be running my first full marathon next April. Yes, your condolences are appreciated. The thing is, I think that for the better part of the nine years that I've been working out, finding the right gear is just as complicated. If you follow me on social media, you've seen me try all sorts of platforms and smartwatches, which is going to be a separate video. For now, I'm actually going to focus on wireless earbuds, which is not as easy as it seems for a guy like me. See, I run, cycle, and weight train, and since I sweat more than the average human, earbuds don't really survive a year of use, or their design isn't ideal for all kinds of activities. So to respond to all your questions on IG over the ones I'd recommend, I decided to put a list of five. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's dive in. start, let me narrow down the things that I look for in any pair of earbuds for fitness. The first being durability because they're not what I'd call affordable. Second is fit because the more I sweat, the more they loosen up or fall off. Third is sound quality for obvious reasons. I tempo run, so following the beat is everything for me. Fourth is noise canceling for when I'm at the gym and some sort of ambient mode for safety on the road. Last but not least is a compact case to travel light. I decided to pick a few that are more fitness oriented for anyone looking for specifics, and the others are more popular and can do fitness along with my thoughts on them. Let's start with the Jaybird Vista 2, which I've been testing for the last couple of weeks. If what you're looking for is fitness earbuds, I think these are more designed with that purpose. They're the most rugged looking of the bunch with a mesh finish on the outside and the three size options for ear gels that actually protect the entire inside. Now, these wings are what's most important for me as it's the only way the earbuds will remain in place whether I'm running or bench pressing. They've got the highest water resistance rating on this list as well at IP68 and bring military spec for drops, along with a case that's not just Xi compatible for wireless charging, but also IP54. Sound is pretty crisp thanks to their six millimeter drivers. And even without using the EQ, distortion is not really a problem for me. Noise canceling is not just good, but does a really good job at avoiding the suction effect you get from others. And then there's surround sense, which provides the ambient mode you'll want outdoors with a level that you can actually determine through the application. Now, each of these modes determines battery life. You get eight hours of playback without them or six on any of those modes if they're active. And then the case will give you an extra 24 hours with five minutes of a charge giving you one hour of playback. Now, one of the reasons why I drift more to them is actually controls. These are of the proud few that let you control volume levels. And then you can assign whatever combo of taps or presses to do whatever you want on the application. Also, you can track them on the app if you were to lose them, for example, which is pretty cool. I'd say that for anyone with a rugged lifestyle, these might just be the only earbuds you need, both for work and for play, though obviously your taste will determine how much you prefer or don't prefer their look and feel. I think the ones that I've used for longer are the Jabra Elite Active 75T. For years, Jabra has been one of the only brands that I would trust to survive my day-to-day -day sweat, even though other brands have either caught up lately or surpassed them. These are not just IP57 sweat and water resistant, but Jabra offers an extended warranty after you register them in the app for free. That said, I'd call these more of a middle ground because even if they are active earbuds, they look like regular lifestyle alternatives. They're small and compact and somehow also manage to include volume controls and your typical playback options on each earbud. Also, kudos to Jabra for adding noise canceling with a software update, along with an ambient mode that's okay, but not my favorite when it comes to wind noise. Battery life also goes up to 7.5 hours with 20 more on the case and the obvious reductions on A and C. 
Now, audio is where I'm mixed. See, their design gets pretty deep in your ear. And while that means that sound quality is close to amazing, it also means that bass is pretty strong, probably too good for most ears, so make sure you EQ it on the application if head rumbling bothers you. I also wish that Jabra didn't do away with the wingtips that they offered in previous models, as these do loosen up every now and then with enough sweat on the bench. Now, for anyone looking for a minimalistic pair of active earbuds, I'd say these should be your pick. I know what your next question is, what about Galaxy Buds? Their integration with Samsung's ecosystem is pretty awesome and their price is very tempting. So my quick answer is that you can use them, but I'd suggest you pick the Galaxy Buds Pro. They offer the highest water resistance certification of the bunch with IPX7 and their ambient mode is pretty awesome during regular use. Their active noise cancellation is also close to the top of my list in this category, along with the tricks to track them through Samsung smart things. Now, there are a few reasons why I would only use them as a last resort. First, their design is kind of an irony because their case is the smallest of the bunch and yet their fit is bulkier in the ear. It's fine for an hour, but can get in the way of comfort for longer. Also, listen, I'm sorry, but capacitive controls and fitness do not go together. I know pressing buttons on earbuds isn't ideal, but I prefer that over changing my track on capacitive buttons just because I was trying to readjust them. So yeah. If you have them, they're good, but honestly, they're not my favorite. And for the iOS users, I know the next question is about AirPods. So listen, Gen 1 or Gen 2 are not certified water resistant, so I'd avoid those. And then AirPods 3 are sweat and water resistant, but if those feel like if they're falling off on a regular walk, it's worse during a workout. To those of you who can pull that off, respect. I'd recommend AirPods Pro more for fitness as they've got the sweat and water resistance certification, the controls on them are pretty good on the stems, even if not as complete as the first two options I mentioned, and then their sound quality is probably at the top of my list. Let's be honest, Apple understands sound quality better than most. That being said, I think their transparency mode is just amazing. Their vent system provides such great relief to you to forget that they're in your ear and their active noise cancellation is best in class. Now, even if these are my favorite earbuds for regular use, my problem is their price is so high that I don't see myself beating them up. Sure, Apple Care Plus could help with that, but if I'm honest, I mean, they're already the most expensive in the bunch, and it's the reason why I have these for regular use, and then I use others for fitness. Maybe the better alternative to AirPods for less of a price tag, but better compatibility with Android are the Beats Studio Buds. Yes, I wish the Beats Fit Pro would have been available for me to test before I made this video, but trust me, that'll be content for another. Now, in typical Beats fashion, the case of these Studio Buds is the largest in the bunch, but it's still flat enough for me to call it compact, and it's also the reason why I just completely ignore the monster case of the Power Beats Pro. Maybe what I like the most is actually their design. It's pretty minimalistic, and uh, yet their sound is nearly AirPods quality. They also bring active noise cancellation along with their own version of transparency mode. I mean, it's not as good as AirPods Pro, but good enough to be second on my list. What's interesting is that even with their lack of wings, their sort of loop design helps them remain in your ear pretty well. Though keep in mind that they're only IPX4 sweat and water resistant, which is still good, but less capable than the others on the list. Also, their buttons are pretty great. They're very responsive, or at least enough to spare you the need to dig them in your ear, even if they do lack volume controls. For anyone looking for that sort of AirPods experience where they're even trackable on Find My, their price makes them a pretty good alternative. To conclude, notice that I'm not calling out a winner. Picking out earbuds is a matter of taste and is much dependent on the user as the color you pick on your next phone. Still, if it were up to me, I think the Jaybirds offer the most features for the money, though anyone that's okay with a bit less features but a good enough 
fit at a lower price tag, then I think the Beats Studio would be my second pick. And maybe the third would be the Jabras, and not because they're not great. I've seriously used them most. It's just that after testing their new Elite 85Ts, which address most of my minor complaints, I mean, I can't wait for those to launch with an active variant. Anyways, wish me luck on my marathon training and uh, let us know which one would you pick in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me uh, do crazy things as I, I don't know, it's a New Year's resolution or whatever. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.